Hello and welcome once again to the political rumble where in this general election season of 2024 we will take a look at all the big political developments this week and every week. Is the India alliance, the opposition alliance finally taking some shape? This week remember an alliance between the Congress and the Samajwadi party in Uttar Pradesh and a likely alliance between Ahmadbi party and Congress in Delhi and Gujarat. Can this alliance really challenge the Modi-led BJP juggernaut or is it simply too little, too late? Those are some of the questions we'll raise and we'll do a deep dive and give you a sense of just what lies ahead in this battle for 2024. We're going to start the political rumble by focusing on India's most populous state, the biggest state in terms of seats, Uttar Pradesh with 80 seats. What has this Samajwadi Party Congress alliance done to the political equations in Uttar Pradesh, where the SP will now contest 63 seats and the Congress will contest 17. First, take a look at what the political contenders here have to say on this new alliance. We will try to increase the vote to the If the vote is 36%, then we will try to increase the vote We will go to the and they will विस्तृत कार्यक्रम आने वाला है जो आगरा में कार्यक्रम होगा उसमें विस्तृत कार्यक्रम आने के बाद मैं शामिल होऊंगा बीजेपी के हाथ से ऐसा लगता है जैसे तोते उड़ गए उनके चेहरे से लग रहा है वो समझ रहे थे आम आदमी पार्टी के साथ दिल्ली में समझौता नहीं होगा हो गया उनको पूरी उम्मीद थी कि सापा पे दबाव बना के वो समझौता नहीं करने देंगे पर अखिलेश जी ने दृढ़ता दिखाई समझदारी दिखाई और इंडिया गठबंधन में समझौता किया ये अपने परिवार और अपने वोट बैंक से बाहर देख ही नहीं सकते सोच ही नहीं सकते तभी तो हर चुनाव के दौरान साथ आते हैं और जब परिणाम नील बटा सन्नाटा आता है तो ये एक दूसरे को गाली देते हुए अलग हो जाते हैं इस बार तो इनको जमानत बचाने के लिए ही बहुत संघर्ष करना पड़ेगा Okay, our focus then, what happens in the battleground state of Uttar Pradesh with these new alliances? Joining me now, Rahul Verma, fellow at the Center for Policy Research, tracks Hindi heartland politics in particular very closely. Sanjay Kumar, co-director, Lokniti, CSDS, and someone who has all the numbers as a cephologist. Ghansham Tiwari is national spokesperson, Samajwadi Party. Tuhin Sinha is spokesperson, BJP. Rohan Gupta is National Spokesperson Congress. So first we'll focus on UP, then we'll move to Delhi and Gujarat. I want to get a sense first from the two uh, experts that I have. Uh, what do they believe this alliance means? Rahul Verma, you first. What's your sense? Is this alliance any kind of a game changer or is it simply an alliance attempting to save the inevitable or to prevent the inevitable? See, given the situation Congress was heading into with every other ally walking out, uh, be it Trinamool Congress or Janata Dal United, I think uh, from Congress's perspective, this is a good news that Samajwadi Party uh, is going to uh, be in alliance with them and has conceded uh, 17 seats more than I think what Congress was expecting. And similarly, an alliance in Delhi uh, with our Madni party, with all, after all the bickering, I think again is a good news. Now, the second question is, would it be enough for Congress party to challenge DJP in uh, Uttar Pradesh or Delhi? I think that's a hard task. The reason, even if you put together the vote share of Congress party and Samajwadi party uh, in UP, or Aam Aadmi Party and Congress in Delhi, uh, BJP was far ahead. Both In both states, BJP's own vote share was above 50%. This is not to say that everything is over for Congress in both these states, so there's no need to uh, uh, be in such alliance. But I think the road ahead is not that easy. Getting together is just the beginning of things. Interesting that this is only a starting point. Sanjay Kumar, I want to turn and I'll put up the numbers in a moment of the Mood of the Nation poll for UP. We very clearly said that here the BJP is poised to really sweep the state, get at least a minimum of 70 to 72 seats uh, with its ally, the Apna Dal, and now a new ally, RLD. The numbers could go even further of the 80 seats. Last time they got 62 on their own, 65 in alliance. 
Is Uttar Pradesh simply still a dominant BJP-run state now? So even if the Samajwadi Party and the Congress come together, the Congress with, what, 12% in Vidhan Sabha last time is simply no position to challenge a dominant force like the BJP that, as Rahul put it, got more than 50% of the vote. So absolutely, Rajdeep. Yes, it is a good start because now Congress has been able to form an alliance with Samajwadi Party. So there is some moral booster for the party worker, party mm -hmm. leader that I would say this would this should be seen as the first victory of Congress in for 2024 Lok Sabha elections because they were trying hard to form alliances. But does that mean that they will be able to challenge the BJP in UP? Certainly not because as we know, even though even though we know that when the there is an alliance between two parties, all the votes do not merge uh, together. But even if you merge artificially the votes polled by Samajwadi Party and Congress uh, in 2019 election, uh, they still lag far behind BJP. So it's a good beginning, good start. But I don't think things have changed. What you what we have seen in the mood of the nation poll or what was estimated from the mood of the nation poll only because now Congress and Samajwadi Party has been able to form an alliance. I don't think that it is going to change the number of seats which parties are likely to win. Only thing is that the contest may become a little more interesting in many constituencies. We'll come to the constituencies. How many constituencies will the contest get more interesting? But first comment from you, Rohan uh, Gupta, and I want to take you back to 2017. Because that is when Congress and Samajwadi Party also came together. Rahul Gandhi and Akhilesh Yadav sharing a stage. And the entire uh, slogan was UP ke ladke. It was devised by Prashant Kishore. But the fact is even with the Prashant Kishore, Rahul Gandhi and the Samajwadi Party could not challenge the BJP which got a majority in UP in 2017. What's changed? Seven years later, the UP ke ladke have only got seven years older. No, absolutely not. In seven years, a lot many things have changed, Rajiv. There are a lot of issues which are faced by people of Uttar Pradesh, whether it is farmers or women's security or unemployment issues. It's not that issues are not there. It's that, that that opposition has not been united. And if you see the assembly elections of Uttar Pradesh, last assembly elections, mm -hmm. because of the vote division between Congress party and SP, I think it has impacted around 70 seats. So you cannot rule out these numbers. If you see the last assembly numbers, you can see the consolidation of vote of SP and Congress. I think it will definitely create a formidable opposition for uh, BJP. And whatever the issues they are trying to raise, you know, mm -hmm. the real issues on ground, when people feel that, okay, the opposition is strong, definitely the vote will consolidate and it will benefit UP, uh, Congress party and SP in UP. So I see that this alliance, and Rajiv, let me tell you one more thing. From the day India Alliance was created, BJP was after all the parties to break the alliance. Now, slowly, gradually, all the states are falling in place. I think even uh, uh, alliance with AAP is also going to be closed shortly. Except JDU, I think all other parties, wherever India alliance was there in states, I think we'll be able to stitch alliance. And this is going to be a very, very good news for all the India alliance parties. And the consolidation of vote will definitely impact BJP's perspective. You're saying it's a consolidation of vote. Remember, uh, viewers, the BJP last time got more than 50% of the votes in Uttar Pradesh. And this was when the Samajwadi Party and the BSP, two large parties, came together. But to in Sina, should there be some worry at all in the BJP ranks? Because Uttar Pradesh is where you put a lot of your eggs in the basket. If I look across the country, if there is any state where the BJP hopes to gain double digit and more, UP is one of them. Now, if the alliance comes together, they could chip away in a few constituencies. Should the BJP be a little worried that the SP and the Congress have eventually sealed the deal? We had a vote share of 50% plus in Uttar Pradesh in 2019. In, at the national level, we were out of 220, in 224 Lok Sabha seats, we had a vote share of 50% plus. Majority of them were in Uttar Pradesh. We, you are aware of the disastrous experience of the Samajwadi Party and Congress Alliance during 2017. Today, you know, the Congress-SP alliance is a compulsion for them. Unlike our alliance partners, it, for us, it is a choice. But the fact is, you have seen Rahul Gandhi's outburst in his recent yatra. On the one hand, he talks, he, he calls, you know, the youth of, of Varanasi, you know, drunkards. In another rally or in another speech, you, uh, you have seen him pull up a man, a man by the name of Shiv Prasad Yadav, 
who he very cleverly calls Shiv Prasad, and he works up anger against that person, and that person was, you know, almost beaten up by by uh, people present in the rally. So Rahul Gandhi, at this point of time, his behavior is going is unacceptable in the Hindi heartland and across the country. So whatever alliance alliances they and you know, look at the difference between the BJP and Congress right now. We are. We, you know, we have given the country an aspirational quotient. We are talking of a 10 billion space economy in the last, in the next 10 years. We are talking about infrastructure development. What is Rahul Gandhi talking? OBC, OBC, OBC. Despite the fact that history will prove that OBCs have suffered the most because of the Congress Party's attitude in the last 70 I'll, years, whether it was I the non-implementation of the Kelkar Commission report or whether it was the delay in the implementation of the Mandal Commission report. I will bring in so the, I will bring in the comments. I will, I will play the comments that Rahul Gandhi, Gandhi has made. I will play the comments that Rahul Gandhi has made on that OBC issue, which has uh, created and stirred this controversy. But Gansham Tiwari, you know, it seems almost that the Samajwadi Party, while being the senior partner, has also recognized now that the Rashtriya Lokdal of Jain Chaudhary left, uh, uh, left your alliance and joined hands with the BJP, that you also need the Congress for some kind of consolidation. It could be consolation, but it's also consolidation. Do you agree with me when I say that the Samajwadi Party still is nowhere close to the BJP in the fight for UP? Greetings, Ajit, to you, my fellow co-panelists and the viewers. The three, the three things that are important. Every day we have faced, since India Alliance has, uh, was announced, every day we faced these continuous questions of what happened to this alliance partner, that alliance partner, seat sharing, mm -hmm. whether it will happen. And Uttar Pradesh was uh, presented as the most tricky state in which seat sharing has to be created. And today that seat sharing is created. But in all this line of questioning, what happened to the NDA? Today it's not even NDA. No one, you cover politics. No one here, even the national spokesperson of BJP cannot tell how many parties are allying with Bharatiya Janata Party today? Because it's not NDA anymore. It is NSA, Narendra Surrender Alliance. On one side, you have Mr. Narendra Modi, and you, the other side, you have leaders and parties who have, been, who have surrendered in front, in front of Narendra Modi. And this Narendra Surrender Alliance has no voice except BJP. That's point number one. Point number two, that uh, with the Congress Party in Uttar Pradesh, with our PDA mission, with the Bharat Jodo Nyaya Atra, one thing is clear that the message to the youth of Uttar Pradesh is that here is an alliance which will openly talk about the rampant unemployment. We saw videos and images of 48 lakh students standing in railway stations in the middle of night to write an exam that will select 60,000 const constables. And even in that, a paper was leaked. Now there's a amplification of voice across Uttar Pradesh that Beti Bachao, that has become a dhamki, a threat, Will, will ha has to be turned on its head and has to become a slogan, a mission of the government. People like Braj Bhushan Singh, who are the ambassadors of BJP, have to be uh, shunted out by the daughters of Uttar Pradesh. That's point number two. Mm -hmm. Point number three, that a, a government that is so brazen, that it says char so par, it can only do char so par when it uh, uh, uses the Anil Masi model that we saw in Chatti Chandigarh. Otherwise, there's no char so par. The reality is a brazen government is, is opposing the public disclosure on electoral bonds collected 5,200 crores to electoral bonds, mm -hmm. is firing on farmers. A young farmer uh, has died. Several farmers have injured. Many have lost their, their eye, eyesight. This is a uh, government which is firing through drones, and, and we have seen images that are not there in any, any part of the world. Even in North Korea, you will not see th this kind of images. What kind of dictatorship will, in, will happen in India if these mm. people, are, people are elected because they will use the same model me, on, on daughters of India, youth of India, get, that they are using on farmers of India? Let me get Tuin Sira to respond before I go back to Rahul and uh, Sanjay Kumar. Tuin Sira respond. There is a sense, according to the opposition, that particularly in the last week, uh, the handling of the farmer protests, uh, the fact that there are more uh, allegations being made of paper leaks and students again... Uh, uh, protesting, all of this doesn't augur well. If, if all is well, first of all, why would you pick up a Jain Chaudhary? You know, right, why would you pick up, to... just a minute, sir, again, you must allow me, you must also have the courtesy to allow me to ask the question. And a party like the RLD, Jain Chaudhary's party, you, pick a, you take it from the Samajwadi, they join you. If you are so confident of getting 70, 75 plus in UP, why do you even need the RLD? Is a sense that you need to control farmer anger, you need to control student anger, uh, there, Tuhin. 
Well, I'll answer each of the questions. First, to come to the paper leaks, if you just look at the different states, most of these paper leaks, or almost all of them, happen in opposition rule states, whether it is Jharkhand, whether it is Rajasthan. You know, the liquor, liquor scams happen in opposition states, whether it is Chhattisgarh, they all follow a pattern of cooperative corruption, which is, which is where these scams are, you know, uh, follow a design, which is probably encouraged by, by all of these regional parties. Now, when it comes to uh, Jain Chaudhary, a lot of a lot of parties in the last few months have uh, reached out to us and you know uh, and offered to to join together. Based on merit, we have we have you know we have an inclusive model. If giving away two seats and one Rajya Sabha seat, I mean we, the the deal is not finalized, but that, that that is what it seems to be, makes us more inclusive. Why not? At a given point of time, if a certain alliance partner only enhances our prospects of getting 400 seats uh, in all, mm -hmm. I think that should that is our goal. And we are like a student who's never happy with our performance. Finally, you know, I can understand Samajwadi Party and Congress uh, Congress getting into an alliance because there are a lot of ideological similarities. At one point of time, a Samajwadi Party leader had been dismissive of the rapes in his state by calling it ladke hain, galti ho jati hai. Today, both Congress and Samajwadi Party have not uttered a word on Sandesh Kali. The, probably the most horrific episode in independent India's history. So obviously these are the similarities which bind them together. Uh, Rahul Verma, the word was used once by, uh, just now by Ghansham Tiwari called PDA. This is the new word, buzzword for the opposition in UP. To our viewers, let me explain what is PDA as Akhilesh Yadav calls it. He says the Pichre Dalit and Alp Sankhya. So the uh, backwards and Adi Abadi and Alp Sankhya have all come together. Adi Abadi. Okay, just a minute. Now, you know, Ghansham Tiwari, please allow the anchor also to moderate. You are saying Adi Abadi, Alp Sankhya. That's what they mean. Essentially, it means that minorities, backwards, and Dalits are coming together. This is the broad alliance, Rahul Verma, that Akhilesh Yadav wants to stitch. Do you believe that this is a broad enough alliance that could? at least in some parts of UP where Muslim Dalit votes can come together, make a difference? Or is Mayavati crucially the missing link? Had Mayavati joined this alliance, it would have made a real difference. Okay, uh, thank you, Rajdeep. First, I don't know even if Mayavati would have joined, uh, if it would have made a difference or not. See, what we don't understand is that the vote share of both the Congress party as well as the BSP is declining in last 10 years. So in 2022, uh, 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 Congress party's vote share was around less than 4% or BSP was less than 12% of the vote share. So they are shrinking parties. Now, of course, if you can get OBCs and Dalits and Muslims in most parts of North India, uh, 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 then you have a winning alliance. But saying this as sort of like is not going to bring them together. In fact, what seems to be happening across North India is that BJP is getting a greater share of OBC votes and a greater share of Dalit votes. So, in fact, in 2022, uh, BJP not only got uh, non jatav Dalit vote, but also managed to make inroads among Jatavs. So, what is happening is Dalit base of BSP is shrinking and OBC's B BJP had been expanding its base. So, just like using these sort of like, uh, you know, community groups and thinking that you can uh, create an alliance. One, it's not easy. And two, I think this is where the opposition is not getting at the real politics. Uh, the, this is like a politics of 1990s and 2000s, where you were trying to create broad-based social coalitions uh, by using group identities. Uh, where BJP, of course, they also do social engineering, but they are using very different kind of messaging to bring these groups together. You know, it's very interesting you say that because uh, Sanjay Kumar Rahul Gandhi at the moment is going across Uttar Pradesh raising caste census and OBCs, saying OBCs, uh, Dalits, Adivasis have been left out by the BJP. He did it in Madhya Pradesh, it didn't work. Can it really work? Is Rahul Gandhi's narrative... Uh, a narrative which simply doesn't reflect the aspirational India which the BJP has been able to capture. Uh, Rajdeep, you rightly mentioned, he did try to re uh, bring up this issue during the assembly election, Madhya Pradesh 
Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, and we know how Congress performed in all these states. I'm not saying that Congress performed badly only because uh, voters did not recognize the issue which Rahul Gandhi was raising. There would have been other issues uh, because of which people didn't vote for the Congress party in such a large number as they had expect as they would have expected to win the election. But I think caste census was one of those issues. Uh, we did the survey and we figured out that a very large number of people support this idea that there should be a caste census. But that is not an issue which is shaping people's voting choices. So what is going, in my opinion, what would happen in 2024? Yes, Congress is pitching hard on, you know, getting a caste census done or at least trying to make this as an issue. But there are a lot of missing links. Uh, people support this idea. People believe that this should happen. There's no harm. People should be, people of different caste communities should be counted. But what takes? What do you do after doing this counting? So I think there is a missing link. Mm. And what Congress needs to do is to, uh, you know, make the big, uh, complete that cycle or complete that circle to convey to the people that if caste census is conducted, what will come out of the caste census and what may be the follow-up right. action by the Congress party if Congress comes to power. If they are able to convince them this to the people, then it might have some resonance among the voters of UP and in other states. Let me just play for a moment what Rahul Gandhi has been saying. Let's just hear Rahul Gandhi on his uh, Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra as it has gone through UP. In rally after rally, he is asking people to tell them their caste and then virtually suggesting that these are the very people who've been left out. He even said that at the Ram Mandir consecration uh, ceremony, he claimed that only people from upper caste or the rich and powerful were there and the Dalits and backward caste had, uh, had been left out. Listen in to what Rahul Gandhi said. Adani Wali, Ambani Wali, Tata Wali, Birla Wali, सुने होंगे नाम आपने आगे पीछे देखो नाम दिख जाएंगे मुझे बताओ मोरिया जी इन 200 कंपनियों के मालिकों की लिस्ट में मोरिया जात के कितने लोग हैं बताओ कोई नहीं है सर भाई और बहनों मोरिया जात का कोई नहीं है चलो बताओ भैया यादव कितने कोई नहीं है बताओ पासी कितने कोई नहीं है सर जातव कितने कोई नहीं है आदिवासी कितने कोई नहीं है सर कुर्मी कितने कोई नहीं है सर लोधी कितने कोई नहीं है भाई और बहनों 50 परसेंट आपकी आबादी है 200 सबसे बड़ी कंपनियों के मालिक में ना एक ओबीसी ना दलित ना ना एक आदिवासी अब मौर्या जी मुझे कहेंगे देखो भैया मैं मालिक नहीं बनना चाहता मैं तो मैनेजमेंट में जाना चाहता हूं तो बताओ मौर्या जी 200 सबसे बड़ी कंपनियों के सीनियर मैनेजमेंट में आपके कितने लोग कोई नहीं है सर जोर से बोलो कोई नहीं है कोई नहीं है तो मैनेजमेंट में कोई नहीं मालिकों में कोई कोई नहीं तिहत्तर परसेंट आबादी का हिंदुस्तान के सबसे बड़ी 200 कंपनियों में कोई नहीं अब भैया मौर्या जी बताओ प्राइवेट अस्पतालों के मालिकों में से मौर्या कितने मुझे किसी का पता नहीं है मौर्य कोई नहीं मैंने लिस्ट निकाली है कोई नहीं अब बताओ प्राइवेट यूनिवर्सिटी कॉलेजेस के मालिक में तिहत्तर परसेंट के कितने कोई भी नहीं अच्छा बताओ सुप हाई कोर्ट में 650 सौ पचास हाई कोर्ट जज है उनमें से बता दो मौर्या कितने एक भी नहीं है you know, Rohan Gupta, when Rahul Gandhi goes into this caste dissection and says the backwards are being left out of the power positions, uh, it almost seems as if Rahul Gandhi is trying to compete, let's say, with the original Mandalite parties and say, look, we, the Congress is the party that will deliver to the so-called forces of Mandal. It seems to be almost too little too late, at least as a political observer, all of this should have happened 20 years ago. The BJP has already combined Mandal and Mandir. I don't agree, Rajdi. And that's why Rahul Gandhi is talking about caste census. 
and one of the panelists, I think uh, Sanjay ji told that what Congress party will do and that you will see when our campaign is going to be launched, you will see the concrete idea behind what consensus will uh, do to the country. No, no, what and is the Congress idea? Is no, 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 Rohan Gupta, give us the idea. They, it's not some national secret when Rahul Gandhi, for example, says, Jitni abadi utna haq. Is he saying Absolutely. that if, I, if, so the, if there are... Fifth, no, one minute. Is he saying that I will give reservation based on proportion of population? See, Rajdeep, once the caste census will be out, the right of the population, the jitni abadi utna adhikar, all the policies will be around this idea. That is what Rahul Gandhi is saying. When he's asking questions to the youth, he's asking very simple, why 73% dominant caste of India, they are not there? There is a difference. There is a there is somewhere the policies of this government, it is pro-rich. And that's why the poor people, the who are majority of the population, they are not getting benefit of the so-called development. And that's why when you see the number of poor, which is if you see the per capita income of India, if it is lower than Bangladesh today, you see that this policy of this government, when they talk about development, it is a low-sided no, development no. of future of few rich people. No, no, Rahul, no, 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 no Ro, uh, Rohan Gupta, uh, Prime Minister, and I'll play what he said also in a moment. Prime Minister says he sees only four castes. He is claiming, Narendra Modi ji is claiming there are four castes before him, which is the poor, the garib, the kisan, the annadata, the farmer. Uh, he speaks about the youth, the yuva and mahila women. He is saying these are my four castes. So he is apparently saying that he is saying Rahul why Gandhi is dividing is people and uniting people. Rajdeep, then why is he saying that he is the biggest OPC? Why is talking that Congress party has done injustice to his caste when he was in Gujarat? So come on, Mr. Rajdeep, if you see Mr. Modi, he was the first one to start his OBC politics. And when he sees Congress party raising the caste census issue, I think BJP is somewhere shattered. Why they are not coming out and saying that we will do the caste census? If they are talking about OBC, they are not able to do that. If Mr. Modi is talking about the four castes, why the Kisans, our Anandata, are on the roads? Why one of the young farmers has been dead to, has died because of police atrocity two days back? Why Mr. Modi is silent on that? You have seen Mahilas in Manipur. What happened to Mahilas in Manipur? You have seen what has happened to Kisan. You have seen what has happened to Yuva. So all the four cars, so-called cars, what Mr. Modi is referring to, all are not getting benefits or development of his policies. Can I just, so I play, can I just day, play what the Prime Minister said and I'll get to in you to respond to what you just heard because the Prime Minister is talking about these four cars versus Rahul Gandhi signaling specific cars who he said have been left out. He mentioned the Mauryas among others. But listen to the, this face-off and the, what the Prime Minister had to say. Media ke aap, naam ke aapka? Haan? Aap Shib Prashad ji hai. Aap ke malik ka kya naam hai? Aap ke malik ka kya naam hai? Kya naam hai? Naam batao. Naam batao. Oye, maro mat yaar. Maro mat usko. Marna nahi hai. Marna nahi hai. Naam batao uska. वो ओबीसी है नहीं वो दलित है नहीं वो आदिवासी है नहीं अरबपति है वो ये किसानों की कभी बात नहीं करेंगे ये दलितों की पिछड़ों की कभी बात नहीं करेंगे ये अपने अखबार में ऐसा कभी नहीं दिखाएंगे ये हिंदुस्तान का भविष्य है ये है इसको देखो अच्छी तरह पेपर लीक बेरोजगारी महंगाई ये आपका भविष्य है मेरे लिए देश की सबसे बड़ी चार जातियां है मेरे लिए सबसे बड़ी जाति है गरीब मेरे लिए सबसे बड़ी जाति है युवा मेरे लिए सबसे बड़ी जाति है महिलाएं मेरे लिए सबसे बड़ी जाति है किसान इन चार जातियों का उत्थान ही अगर भारत को विकसित बनाएगा और अगर चार का हो जाएगा ना इसका मतलब सबका हो जाएगा टू इन सिन्हा यू वॉन्ट टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू वॉट यू जस्ट हर्ड फ्रॉम रोहन गुप्ता ही सेज वेन द प्राइम मिनिस्टर टॉक्स अबाउट पुअर अबाउट वुमेन अबाउट यूथ एट द एंड ऑफ द डे ही ऑल्सो वॉक द टॉक ही इज ऑल्सो गॉट टू वॉक द टॉक यू कैंट है फार्मर्स बींग फायर्ड अपॉन और फार्मर्स बींग टियर गैस एंड यू टॉक अबाउट अन्नदाता You know, Rajdeep, 30 lakh crores of money have directly gone into the pocket of the poor through our various DPI 
uh, through uh, additional public infrastructure, through the social welfare schemes. So, you know, and are you trying to say that when 25 crore people are pulled out of multi-dimensional poverty, we, we are not concerned about the poor? But having said that, you know, if you play out Rahul Gandhi's, and I'm glad you played it without shirking it, the way Rahul Gandhi has been dividing, you know, pitting one caste against the other, that is despicable to say the least. If you ask him about five caste surnames, OBC surnames, without, without uh, you know, Jairam Ramesh or Rohan Gupta passing him the chit, he may not be able to name the five surnames. But the way he divides the people, you know, I think uh, tomorrow, uh, is he going to demand that, you know, in the cricket team, Indian cricket team, you're going to have the... Uh, re re uh, representation ba based mm -hmm. on caste in your newsrooms are you going to have representation based on caste i think we need to rise above his petty and juvenile outbursts now let me also take this opportunity to clarify our stand on caste census which has very clearly been stated by honorable home minister we have never been principally opposed to it but mm -hmm. we don't want to have it as a fudged exercise the way congress conducted it apparently in chhattisgarh and in Karnataka, where they did not even have the moral courage Rajiv. to publish it or to make it public because they knew, knew that it was a, filled yeah. with errors. You know, when in 2011, when, when a caste survey was done in the then census, 8.19 crore errors were detected. And as of today, still 1.5 crore errors remain unattended. So if we have te technical limitations, do you want us to rush into it? I think this is a very sensitive national issue. Okay. And we would approach it with a lot of clarity, with a lot of um, care. Okay, so as I end the UP uh, segment, I just want to ask one question, which is, in a way floating in the air, Priyanka Gandhi Vadra was General Secretary Congress Organization. Ghansham Tiwari, you all have left Rai Bareli Amethi for the Congress. Do you expect Rahul Gandhi to contest from Amethi and Priyanka Gandhi Vadra to contest from Rai Bareli? Is that what the Samajwadi Party would like? Well, I don't think that we determine that. And uh, what we would like is that people of Uttar Pradesh vote against the, the rampant pandemic-like unemployment that Double Engine Sarkar has given to Uttar Pradesh. No, no, the and reason I asked you this is because you in, you will recall that Rahul Gandhi is also almost certain to contest from Wayanad in Kerala. If you want to win Uttar Pradesh, you've got to contest from there. Will Rahul Gandhi, Priyanka yes. Gandhi contest from UP? Would you like to see that? Well, I, I, I want to contest this idea that Uttar Pradesh is a foregone conclusion. In 2022 elections, Samajwadi Party by itself got nearly 3 crore votes in Uttar Pradesh when BJP got 3 crore 80 lakh votes. These are, these are 3 crore people that include youth, that include people from all castes, mm -hmm. that include women. And today, these are the people who are uh, calling out BJP's bluff on employment, on the, the farmer issue. The four castes that the Prime Minister mentioned, Bilkis Banu belongs to that caste or not? The, the medal winners of India, the daughters of India, do they belong to this, do, that caste or not? Are the farmers who are being fired upon, do they belong to the farmers caste that Prime Minister men, mentioned? He did not mention the, okay. the caste of 14,56,226 crores of NPA that his government has written off. What caste is that? Okay. Uh, uh, caste? I, I, I will ask that same question then to you, Rohan Gupta. Will Priyanka Gandhi, Vadra and Rahul Gandhi contest Rai Bareli Amethi or not? Will they lead Let's from the front? अभी तक इतना हुआ है आगे भी अच्छे न्यूज़ देंगे आपको पर एक बात पक्की है राजदीप कांग्रेस पार्टी एंड द होल इंडिया अलायंस इज गोइंग टू फाइट दिस इलेक्शन वेरी वेरी इन अ टफ वे व्हाट एवर बीजेपी इज ओवर कॉन्फिडेंस इज देयर दैट विल बी शटर्ड एंड लेट मी टेल बीजेपी स्पोक्स पर्सन वन थिंग मोदी जी हैज लिमिटेड 30 सीट्स फॉर एनडीए यू नो 370 फॉर बीजेपी और 400 तीसरी दी हुई है तो आपके एनडीए जो है नॉन डेमोक्रेटिक अलायंस वो पार्टियां सारी टेंशन में घूम रही है कि आगे मोदी जी हमको खत्म करने वाले हैं और okay. वो सारी पार्टी का जो वोट है आई एम टेलिंग यू कुनिशना व्हेन द सीट्स विल बी डिक्लेयर बाय एनडीए यू विल सी दैट द स्मॉल पार्टीज आर गोइंग टू वर्क अगेंस्ट यू एंड द बसमासुर होते हैं जो भी भाजपा के साथ जुड़े सब अपना भविष्य खतरे में डाल रहे हैं उनको बहुत जल्द रियलाइज होने वाला है नाउ दिस इज अ वीक वेयर एज वी बीन सेइंग ऑन दिस शो इट्स अलायंस सीजन and one of the most striking and possibly uh, interesting alliances is that of the Congress and the Aam Aadmi Party that's likely to take shape in Delhi and indeed possibly in Gujarat as well. The Aam Aadmi Party likely to fight four seats in Delhi, the Congress three. It is a first of a kind alliance between Rahul Gandhi and Arvind K. G. Waldo. The Rahul Gandhi, Malikarjun Kharge-led Congress and the Arvind Kejriwal led Aam Aadmi Party. Rahul Varma, let's take a look at Delhi. In 2019, 
the BJP swept uh, Delhi, won all seven seats with a 50% margin uh, or 50% vote share. Do you believe that AAP and Congress coming together can change equations? Uh, again, uh, uh, it's difficult. So in 2019, the BJP vote share in Delhi was 57%. Uh, the Congress vote share was 22% and Aam Aadmi Party vote share was 18%. In most seats, because that was a triangular contest, BJP won by a margin of 22 to 20, uh, 25 to 30% vote share. So these two parties coming together, assuming that the same vote share holds, BJP has a 17% lead. Mm -hmm. Now, where these two parties coming together and if they manage to generate a momentum, a uh, couple of seats might get uh, tough for BJP. So what we might see is a closer contest compared to past, but you cannot at this moment say that uh, uh, that AP and Congress have come together, they'll be able to sweep B, uh, Delhi. But Sanjay Kumar, at least it does change the perceptional index. The fact that two parties that were otherwise at war with each other coming together does give the impression that the India alliance can take shape. If Arvind Kejriwal and Congress can come together, then who knows? Yeah, Rajdeep, two things. Why an alliance of Amadi Party and Congress in Delhi is more important compared to what we saw uh, in UP? Because in UP, what has happened? This kind of an alliance was tested earlier also, and this alliance got defeated badly. Mm -hmm. So in people's perception is that even if this alliance is in place, they won't be able to defeat the BJP because such an alliance happened earlier also in 2017 assembly election, and we all know what happened to that alliance. But in Delhi, this is the first time Amami Party and Congress is coming uh, into an alliance. Yes, if you look at the vote share estimate, Rahul is right that it seems very, very difficult for the Amami Party and Congress alliance to pull seats away from BJP. But a perception will get, has been created that both the parties can come together. They have finally managed to form an alliance, work out a seat-sharing arrangement. So there is a positive narrative building in this favor of this alliance, mm -hmm. which will also swing some votes in favor of this alliance. So this perception is going to be very, very important. Mm -hmm. I think the alliance needs to build upon this perception, whether they will be able to do that in the next couple of months or not, that time will say. You know, Priyanka Kakkar, is this an alliance based on desperation that uh, Arvind K. Jiwal has now realized that Ekla Chalore is not going to work. And interestingly, in Punjab, you're going to fight alone against each other. But in Delhi, you've come together almost for survival, particularly with the AAP being hounded, uh, as the AAP claims, by the agencies. Good evening to everyone, Rajdeep Ji. Rajdeep Ji, what desperation. We are three times winner in the Vidhan Sabha elections. We just ousted the BJP after 15 years of misrule in the MCB. We have been constantly gaining ground in Delhi. Uh, the, the figures quoted by the spokesperson previously before me, well, there's a, you know, in 2019, the household savings hadn't dropped to a 50%, which also goes against BJP now. In 2019, the CAG report hadn't exposed the several scams, which the, you know, there is a Soneka Sadak in Dwarka Expressway, which, which, is, uh, which is for all to see now. Several things have changed since 2019. And this alliance is for the greater good, is to save the constitution, the constant attack on democracy, like we saw in the Chandigarh mayor election, which proved that was the first India alliance contest. And we saw what the results, and we saw what BJP tried to do. And... We fought it tooth and nail and we won the elections. So that was, the f that was just a you're, you're precursor to what lies ahead, I would think. You're saying it is to save the constitution, but Rohan Gupta, look at how things change. Till about a year ago, you were calling, even less than that, you were saying that Arvind Kejriwal is a B team of the BJP. When he went into Gujarat, for example, your home state, you said that he's a B team of the BJP. Suddenly... Arvind Kejriwal is breaking bread with the Congress and the two of you are likely to tie up both in Gujarat and in Delhi. What, what, is this an alliance of desperation? Where is the chemistry that is needed between a Kejriwal and indeed the Congress leadership? See, Rajdeep, right now the issue is to save democracy. That is the biggest issue. The way 
democracy has been killed in this country you have seen in chandigarh this is the ultimate example india has never seen in last 77 years of our independence this kind of scenes which is killing our democracy when democracy is at stake i think all the differences of the party whether major minor you have to put them aside and come together this is the pure display of absolute power by no, bjp and we no, no, but then nine months ago you called him the b team of the bjp suddenly he becomes your friend Because because no absolutely because at the time uh, gujarat elections were there when aam aadmi party fought the election it resulted into division of vote if you see gujarat 49% of the vote is anti bjp even now rajni when bjp has won 156 in 6 in gujarat even now bjp vote share is only 51% so 49% of the share in gujarat is anti bjp and when these two parties come together obviously it is going to give uh, you know nightmares to bjp here rajni again i am telling you whether it is chandigarh when mm-hmm. when congress party and aam aadmi they came together they won chandigarh uh, mayor elections and this is the example of how if the opposition votes unite whether this sp congress in up or aam aadmi party and uh, congress party in uh, delhi and other states or maybe west bengal or other states i think that will give a strong reply to bjp number right. one and strong alternative to people i tell you rajni what bjp has done it is trying to convince people by this 400 plus narrative that there is no opposition to bjp and anybody who is talking against bjp or voting against bjp the vote is been wasted and there is no meaning of voting that kind of perception was bjp is trying to build india alliance after forming alliance state by state this perception will go down and people will see yeah there is a strong alliance which is fighting bjp let us go and vote for them So this is what you okay you made your point you made your point to in sina respond you see perception particularly of the aap congress as i said at the start of this segment is that now two parties that were opposed to each other possibly have now come together and they could consolidate that vote they could consolidate for example a tribal vote to some extent in gujarat they could consolidate minority community votes uh, in in delhi they may reach out to middle class groups this is a could be Uh, an alliance you should worry about well rajdeep it is a compulsive and unnatural alliance in the same way that the congress shiv sena alliance w- was you know just a few weeks ago bhagwant man had basically ridiculed the congress party saying ek thi congress so basically mm-hmm. congress has swallowed its self respect because it knows that you know individually if they the two parties had fought against bjp in delhi they would have lost their deposits now they would you know pro- perhaps uh, the cost incurred would be less because they would be putting a joint candidate and maybe they would not lose the deposit see fact is with a 57% vote share we have nothing to lose delhi votes on national issues both of these parties with the kind of corruption they have uh, indulged in have no local stand i you know to to compete with bjp at least at the national level so so none of this worries you the fact that a clever political practitioner like arvind kejriwal joined hands with the congress doesn't worry you at all i not just for 2024 but building up for the future you you believe that this is an alliance of contradictions am i correct well is well he's clever for you for us he is the most mediocre politician who has fooled the people who has cheated them with the with the kind of promises that he made in 2011 of bringing about transformation in society and then indulging in the worst form of corruption i think you know he has uh, aam aadmi party is the biggest scam in the country but having said that one seat in gujarat mm-hmm. or one seat in assam how does it make up a winnable alliance you know you you have been a seasoned journalist how does one seat in gujarat lead you, to consolidation of votes i okay. mean that is something they any yeah. which way if you if you look at the assembly election results both of them it's about both pa- congress and aam aadmi party were mauled they were decimated okay you know uh, priyanka kakkar there is a point in what twin sina says two seats here one seat here let's even say the seven seats of delhi uh, the fact is that it appears that you all are cr- clutching at straws here you are hoping against hope that all your votes consolidate the entire anti bjp vote consolidates and that doesn't happen too often is this aam aadmi party trying to retain its national relevance it's about relevance you all want to stay relevant that's why you've gone and tied up with the congress the very congress that mr kejriwal at one time would call corrupt after winning delhi thrice uh punjab with the historical mandate uh, you know going into gujarat 
अब भाजपा के गढ़ में सेंध मारना कमिंग फोर्टी टू कमिंग सेकेंड ऑन फोर्टी टू सीट इन गुजरात वी हैव अ मेयर इन मध्य प्रदेश वी हैव क्वाइट अ लार्ज संगठन इन सेवरल अदर स्टेट इंक्लूडिंग असम हरियाणा आई डोंट थिंक दैट इट रीक्स ऑफ एनी डेस्पोरेशन वी आर द फास्टेस्ट ग्रोइंग फास्टेस्ट इवॉल्विंग पार्टी आई शुड आस टू हीन Why does Mr. Modi need Besakhi? You know, वो तो अकेले बहुत थे. Why is he he looking for clutches everywhere? Imagine he needs to take the Sahara of O P Rajbhar ji, who called him a sand. He has to go back back to Mr. O P Rajbhar. Why is that? Why is why such desperation on part of the N D A? Why such desperation on part of the N D A that the original naturally corrupt Mm-hmm. NCP is now a part of the NDA. Why such desperation? Okay, how you, many seats will they me, be giving to Shinde that, in the Maharashtra to cabinet? Or, ma'am, ma'am, let me take that. You make a point. Let Tuin respond. Non-democratic, desperate alliance is what the NDA is being called. You will go along with an Ajit Pawar in Maharashtra. You will no, bring, no. Uh, you will bring back Nitish Kumar. You will get RLD also into your fold. Om Prakash Radhbar also made all kinds of comments against Prime Minister. So it isn't as if the BJP also is not on the hunt for allies to win. No, Rajdeep. Like I mentioned at the very start, theirs is a alliance of compulsion. Ours is an alliance of choice. Mm-hmm. You know, as Honorable Prime Minister has repeatedly said, for us, 370 seats is the target which we are working on diligently, which we will achieve because that is Modi's key guarantee. You've seen that in the two previous elections. Mm-hmm. So, for us, two-third majorities anyway cross, but we have the ability to carry people along. Unlike this opposition, where Rahul Gandhi's you know vituperative outburst drives people and alliance partners away, and then a few days later they come back because of desperation. so that is not the way bjp is today we have the ability to carry people along we believe in pragmatic politics and politics should be pragmatic you know you're saying it's pragmatic so when you do it it's pragmatic politics when they do it it is opportunism <laughs> you know that's that's what you seem to be telling me to in when you strike an alliance it's pragmatism when they strike an alliance it's no, no, opportunism see, uh, let's take it let's take it let, let's Let's take it individually. The last, the alliance, you know, which were in in the last one month, the two new alliances which have come up with Nitish Kumar. At any point of time, did we leave Nitish Kumar? When he has gone away, if at a given point of time he comes back, and we feel that it is in the interest of the total man mm-hmm. of the total seats that we are looking for, which and by the way. politics you know a loser cannot do anything in po- any you cannot bring about any changes in politics if we feel certain alliance bar, uh, alliances will help us cross the 400 seat uh, target which we have set and which will in in effect ma- make us bring landmark legislations i think that should be okay. welcomed as pragmatic politics okay yeah, nitish I- kumar is not a dynast he is not a corrupt corrupt person unlike many of the okay you know I, i rahul varma how do you how do you see this the two parties are both hunting for allies the india alliance has sealed a couple of alliances it does it hasn't stopped the bjp from looking at alliances there's even talk now the telugu desam could come on board who knows the akalis would have come on board but for the farmer protest are both these parties looking for allies to boost their numbers to create a perception how do you see it uh that's true uh, uh you know both these uh, parties the bjp is looking for allies to actually uh, enlarge its footprint and its dominance mm-hmm. uh, it's basically trying not to leave anything to chance uh, and perhaps better its record of 303 mm-hmm. whereas the congress alliance at the moment seems to be basically bringing down the tally of bjp below 272 so that there is some sort of like that's the best case scenarios of both parties the the bjp wants to basically touch across 350 and the congress somehow wants to keep bjp below 272 uh, so it's, and, and so it's damage there, limitation there is, so it's damage limitation for the congress yes and 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 and, and there in lies i think where uh, like the opposition at the moment uh, you know of course some of these alliances is going to change the perception about uh that whether these allies can come together or not mm-hmm. but like that's the first step uh, breaking the perception that they can come together is different from whether they can challenge the bjp in 2024 is right. different for from that now this alliance is strong enough for me to vote for them 
This is, these are three different analytical questions. Okay. Do you see, though, uh, uh, Sanjay Kumar, this alliance, this mood for alliance now spreading to other states? Mamta Banerjee has said, I'm going Ekla Chalore so far, but could she change her mind also? Do you see, therefore, pressure on even the regional parties? No one can go in this, in this election on their own. Everybody needs some tie-up. No, Rajdeep, uh, in the days when politicians change the mind and shift from one party to another, why can't Mamta Banerjee change her mind and think of having an alliance with the Congress. The possibility is always there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the possibility is very bleak because there have been a lot of exchange between the two parties, but the possibility is still there because uh, the perception building, I think the two alliances which is which has been worked out by Congress and Amandi Party mm -hmm. in Delhi and Samajwadi, Samajwadi Party, uh, even though it doesn't, in my opinion, affect the electoral prospects of Congress and Samajwadi Party or Amadi Party in a big way. Mm -hmm. But what it works in favor of the alliance is building a perception. Because for the last couple of years, months, mm -hmm. there, were, there were a lot of talk that they can't come together, they've been fighting, etc., etc. But coming together has created a perception that this alliance now seems to be moving. And there is a possibility that some more parties can join this alliance. You know, in Indian politics, you never know what tomorrow brings. There have been all kinds of strange alliances in recent times. You had Uddhav Thakre of the Shiv Sena coming together with the Congress and the NCP. You had the BJP tying up, you will recall, for a while with Mufti Mohammad Said and the PDP. And uh, you, who knows what tomorrow brings in this country. There are no permanent friends or enemies in politics. There are only permanent interests. And that's what I think is the final word that I want to leave you with this episode of political rumble in this alliance season, this election season. To all my guests for joining me, thank you very much. To all you watching, well, as always, you'll get the sharp political perspectives from the team here at India Today in this election season. Thanks very much for watching. Till next week, goodbye. Namaskar. Jai Hind. Thanks for watching.